Bathtubs and sinks aren't the only bodies of water that get drained. Sometimes lakes and rivers have to be too. Sometimes on purpose, other times not. For whatever reason, whether it be weather-related, inevitable climate change, or expanding human infrastructure, what remains at the bottom when the water is removed can be shocking. It could be literally anything. It has real importance to the families to determine uh, so they can have closure and uh, know what happened to their families and have remains. Ghost towns? Dinosaur bones? Worships? Oh my! Just wait till we pull the plug on this one. You'll float down here. 15 Bizarre Discoveries Found in Drained Water Bodies Part 2 Sea Dragon Described as one of the greatest finds in the history of British paleontology, check out this gigantic prehistoric sea dragon discovered in the Midlands of England. It was discovered during the routine draining of a lagoon island at the Rutland Water Reservoir. Okay, so it's not an actual dragon, but more like a giant prehistoric dolphin. Ichthyosaurs, which were marine reptiles, first appeared about 250 million years ago and resembled dolphins in their general body shape. They're called sea dragons because they tend to have very large teeth and eyes. This ichthyosaur, which is about 180 million years old with a skeleton measuring about 32 feet in length and a skull weighing about one ton, is the largest and most complete fossil of its kind ever found in the UK. Two incomplete and much smaller ichthyosaurs were found during the construction of Rutland Water in the 1970s, but the latest discovery is the first complete skeleton. Despite the many fossils found in Britain, it's remarkable to think that this is the largest skeleton ever found in the UK. It's a truly unprecedented discovery and one of the greatest finds in British paleontological history. Once you learn to snorkel or dive, a whole new world opens up underneath the surface. Corals, shoals of fish, and caves create a thrilling new experience. Adding to that excitement are the artificial reefs and other attractions created by resorts for divers and free divers or snorkelers to explore. Among the most haunting of these sites, you can see sculptures, some new and some ancient. Seeing a work of art looming out of the mysterious depths is a unique experience, but what scientists found at the bottom of this drain lake has left people speechless. This sculpture of a god in a lotus position wasn't supposed to be there nor was its head ever found, according to reports. So what does that mean? Did some sort of ancient natural disaster deposit this sculpture where it sits now? Or did someone put it there? Maybe thieves robbed the monument of its head in an act of vandalism. There's a lot to unpack in this image about the possible origin. Where did the water go? What do you think? Comment below with the hashtag open discussion. Bombay Beach Town Bombay Beach in California is the lowest community in the United States, located 223 feet below sea level. And this is what it looks like today. During the 1950s, Bombay Beach was a popular beach-going destination. Celebrities such as Frank Sinatra, the Beach Boys, and Bing Crosby frequented the luxury resorts along the Salton Sea, which was known for its fishing, boating, and water skiing. The area attracted half a million tourists annually rivaling Yosemite National Park. That was until the 1980s, when the draining and increasing salinity of the Salton area rendering the beach a ghost town. Despite this, by 2018, a number of people had moved into the area, and the town's many abandoned structures and features from its past have drawn visitors back in. Most of the residents use golf carts to get around since the nearest gas station is 20 miles away. There are only two stores in the town, one of which is a convenience store and the closest hospital was over 45 minutes away. Yet the derelict living ghost town status of Bombay Beach has attracted many photographers, filmmakers, urban explorers, and tourists. World War II Warships Thanks to the worst drought Europe has had in years, it pushed the mighty River Danube to one of its lowest levels in almost a century, exposing the hulks of dozens of explosive-laden German warships sunk during World War II. Viewed by scientists as a consequence of climate change, the drought exposed more than 20 hulks on a stretch of the river near Prohovo in eastern Serbia, many of which still contain tons of ammunition and explosives and pose a danger to shipping. 
strewn across the riverbed. Some of the ships still boast turrets, command bridges, broken masts, and twisted hulls, which others lie mostly submerged under sandbanks. The vessels were among hundreds scuttled along the Danube by Nazi Germany's Black Sea Fleet in 1944 as they retreated from advancing Soviet forces and still hamper river traffic during low water levels. Workers in the local fishing industry are also at risk, including those from Romania, which lie just across the river. In addition to the dangers posed by tons of unexploded ammunition, the wrecks have reduced the navigable width of the channel by nearly half, a mere 330 feet as opposed to the usual 600. World War II Bomb Heat waves sweeping Europe recently have brought not just record high temperatures and scorched fields, the drought-stricken waters of Italy's River Po are running so low, they revealed a previously submerged World War II bomb. So, Italy declared a state of emergency for areas surrounding the Po, which is the country's longest river. It accounts for roughly a third of Italy's agricultural production and is suffering its worst drought in 70 years. It was no easy task to clear that bomb. About 3,000 people living nearby were evacuated for the disposal operation. The area's airspace was shut down, and navigation along that stretch of the waterway as well as traffic on a railway line and state road close by were halted. Then the bomb squad, escorted by police, transferred the device to a quarry nearby about 30 minutes away. Bomb disposal engineers removed the fuse from the U.S. manufactured device, which the Army said contained 530 pounds of explosive. Military experts diffused and carried out controlled explosions of the 1,000-pound bomb. Gun and Pistol Tempe Town Lake Tempe Town Lake is an artificial perennial reservoir located on the Salt River in the Indian Bend Wash in Tempe, Arizona. The reservoir receives much of its water from the Colorado River. The lake was emptied to complete construction on a new hydraulically operated steel gate dam that replaces an inflatable rubber system. And authorities found some pretty interesting stuff when the water was gone. Local police confirmed they recovered three pistols from the bottom of the lake. They also recovered a knife and part of another pistol when the lake was empty. And the big questions remained. What were they doing there? This lake has only existed since 1999. In July 2010, one section of the inflatable dam burst, thus releasing water up to 15,000 cubic feet per second into the normally dry Salt River bed. The lake began draining immediately. By the next morning, the lake had lost about three-fourths of its normal water. The dam breach left some areas of the lake with three feet of water or less, and that's why authorities think the weapons could have been washed into the lake thin. But officers said they're continuing to look into the firearms to see if they can determine if they were used in any crime. 400 year old Church Sometimes, for the sake of progress, entire communities are moved to another location to fill water reservoirs like this. Usually, when droughts occur and reservoir water levels recede, it's not a good thing, but this drought in southern Mexico is attracting a lot of enthusiasm. Water levels in this reservoir have dropped by 82 feet, revealing the remains of a mid-16th century colonial church. Known as the Temple of Santiago, the church was built by a group of monks who arrived in the area in the 16th century. However, it's said that the church was likely abandoned due to plagues that ravaged the area in the 1700s. But the 48-foot-tall church became a relic of memory in 1966 when the construction of a dam submerged it underwater. Since then, it's only emerged twice, once in 2002 and again now. The relic with a bell tower reaching 48 feet is surprisingly intact despite its time underwater. Architectural details and design are still clearly able to be observed and admired in this lost place of worship. The church has become a popular destination for tourists and local fishermen have been taking spectators out on boats to get a close-up view. Water levels get low enough for people to walk inside the church, too. Submarine Explorer The Submarine Explorer, built in the 1860s in Brooklyn, New York, was the first submersible that was capable of diving and rising without help from the surface. But sickness among the crew and overfishing of the pearl beds led to the abandonment of this vessel in Panama in 1869. However, the severely rusting hull of the submarine explorer was finally rediscovered, despite being hand-powered 
The cigar-shaped vessel contained pressurized working compartments for passengers and a sophisticated for the time system that allowed the ship to take on water to sink and use pressurized air to rise. After construction, the sub was transported to Panama in 1866 to harvest oysters and pearls in the Pearl Islands. Experimental dives in the Bay of Panama ended a year later when the captain died of a mysterious fever. When a new engineer and crew took over, with known depths and dive profiles that were way too deep, the entire crew succumbed to what was described as decompression sickness, otherwise called the bends. Because of this, the crafts because of this, the craft was laid up in a cove on the shores of the island of San Telmo in the Pearl Islands in a severe state of decay after more than a century of neglect. Secret Trap Door They had us at Manchester's Secret Canal Trap Door. Here in the UK, the hidden underground river Tib crosses the Rochdale Canal. At a point, the two are connected by a trap door in the canal bed which was used to drain water into the underground river. In the canal bed is a chain connected to a wooden trap door. When the canal is drained, this trap door can be lifted to let any further water out of the canal pound between the third and fourth locks. It's a key piece of the local history. These city officials were allowed access to the site of a drained canal lock in section of the Rochdale Canal so they could explore the once industrious canal and one of its biggest secrets, Manchester's secret canal trap doors. The River Tib is a minor tributary of the River Medlock. It has been culverted along its entire length since about 1783 and now runs beneath Manchester city center. During the Roman period, the Tib continued to mark Manchester's boundary until medieval times, as well as providing drinking water. Set in the bottom of the canal when it was constructed at the turn of the 18th and 19th centuries, the door acts as a plug hole allowing the Rochdale Canal water to be drained away into the hidden river almost 20 feet below. 1000 Lingas Bridgehead is an archaeological site on the southwest slopes of Kulin Hills in Cambodia. The site consists of a series of stone rock relief carvings and sandstone formations of the river bed and banks. It's commonly known as the River of a Thousand Lingas. The carving of vestiges began when two kings ruled between the 11th and 12th centuries. The archaeological site was discovered in 1969, but further exploration was cut off due to the Cambodian Civil War. The site regained prominence for safe visits in 1989. The motifs for stone carvings are mainly myriads of lingams, phallic symbols, depicted as nearly arranged bumps that cover the surface of the sandstone bedrock. There are also various Hindu mythological motifs including depictions of the gods as well as animals. The lingams, such of which date back to the 9th century, are about 10 inches square and 4 inches deep and lined in a perfect grid pattern. The river runs over them, and according to ancient lore, the holy objects are designed to create a power path for the kings. After the carvings, the river falls into a clear water pool. As it flows over the holy lingams, the river attains a sanctified status and passes through the temples that are downstream. Spanish Stonehenge Europe suffered an unusually hot summer recently, with its highest temperatures ever in the month of June. Luckily, the scorching weather conditions revealed an unexpected sight in Spain. After 50 years out of sight beneath the waters of a man-made lake in western Spain, the 7,000-year-old megalithic monument known as the Dolmen of Guadalajara is finally back on dry land. Known as the Spanish Stonehenge, the formation is a large circle of about 150 standing stones, some more than six feet tall, arranged around a central open oval. Archaeologists speculate that the structure was built in the 4th or 5th millennium BC, possibly making it thousands of years older than Stonehenge in England. In 1963, the area was flooded by the construction of a reservoir, a project to bring water and electricity to less developed parts of the region. Since the creation of the reservoir, the tips of some megalithic rocks have occasionally pierced the surface of the water, but never has the entire site been revealed at once. Before long, with the rains of autumn and winter approaching, the stones will likely be submerged again. Canal St. Martin The Canal St. Martin is a 2.8 mile long canal in Paris, connected to the river Seine. Nearly half its length was covered in the mid-19th century to create wide boulevards and public spaces on the surface. And even today, 
The canal is drained and cleaned every 10 to 15 years, and it's always a source of fascination for people to discover curiosities and even some treasures among the hundreds of tons of discarded objects. 15 years doesn't seem like a long time, but when it comes to trends in technology, studying what items were like more than a decade ago tends to reveal true riches from the past. People were stunned by what kinds of treasures had sunk to the bottom of the water. Even after being encased in mud and dirt for years, you'll have a hard time believing what astonishing artifacts and objects were discovered in the 200-year-old ancient seaway. There were all types of fascinating historical valuables and treasures that were misplaced along the waterways. Within the garbage that had sunk to the bottom of the water years prior sat some hidden treasures as well. Unbelievably, the cleaning crew found bikes, bathtubs, and even a few World War II bombshells. Mystery of Foss Lake A decades-old mystery that captivated Oklahoma had been solved after officials confirmed the identities of two groups of people, some of them teens, who went missing in 1969 and 1970. The first crack in the cold case came when police in the tiny town nearby were testing sonar equipment in murky Foss Lake. They were stunned to discover a green 1952 Chevrolet and a blue 1969 Chevrolet Camaro. Uh-oh. But the announcement did little to subdue suspicions in the nearby town of 3000 that had been gripped by the mystery for years. They found what many people suspected for years to be true, but shrouded in urban legend. Human remains found in the Camaro matched the general descriptions of three local teenagers who went missing in 1970. The state medical examiner's office said, the other remains matched the genders and ages of three passengers in the green Chevrolet who went missing in 1969. The cars were found side by side in just 12 feet of water. Mud had settled and aquatic plants had long since grown over the watery graves. For over 50 years, the murky waters of Foss Lake near America's iconic Route 66 highway had kept their grisly secret. But the mystery of Foss Lake is no more. Hidden Ming Stretching for nearly two miles across the surface of Poyang Lake, it was once China's longest lake bridge, providing a crucial transport link for those who lived there. As the lake level rose, it disappeared into a watery grave, buried under the surface for almost 400 years. Not anymore. A prolonged drought means it emerges during the dry season. Poyang Lake is China's largest freshwater lake, and at its unusual peak, usually covers an area twice the size of London. Fed by the Yangtze River, its size varies wildly depending on the season, but in recent years it's been struggling to fill itself during winter, and all but disappears in summer. The lake serves as an important part of Ming history, as that's where the first Ming emperor won a victory in 1363, effectively beginning the dynasty. Made from granite, measuring more than 2,500 feet and dating to 1631, the structure was known as the Thousand Eye Bridge because it had 1,100 holes dotted along its length. Built during the reign of the last Ming Emperor, it served as a key link between the large towns and small fishing villages that surrounded the water. Today, visitors travel to see the Ming Dynasty creation as it appeared among the mud in the Poyang Basin. Ancient Buddhist Statues These stunning ancient Buddhist statues were recently revealed by the receding waters of the Yangtze River during a dramatic drought affecting southwestern China. A once submerged island has appeared in the dwindling river, crowned by a trio of carved statues believed to be 600 years old. The statues sit within carved alcoves at the high point of an island reef and have been speculatively identified as dating to the Ming and Qing dynasties. The central figure is a monk sitting on a lotus pedestal. Perhaps he's praying for rain. The Yangtze is the longest river in Asia and the third longest in the world. It's still flowing, albeit at a much diminished capacity, even as some 66 rivers across 34 countries in this region have dried up due to a 70-day heat wave that continues to linger and rainfall that's been reduced to 45% of normal levels. For locals, their reappearance has been an invigorating surprise. However, the Yangtze now sits at its lowest level since experts started keeping records in 1865. Though studying the drought measured water levels at a key area of it at almost 20 feet lower than the recent average, forecasts fortunately predict the relics potentially returning to their place underwater soon enough. 
Spanish Ghost Village A ghost village has emerged as drought has nearly emptied a dam on the Spanish-Portuguese border drawing crowds of tourists with its eerie gray ruins. With the reservoir at 15% of its capacity, details of a life frozen in 1992 when the Acerado village in Spain's northwestern region was flooded to create the reservoir are being revealed once more. Drone footage showed the derelict buildings. Walking on the muddy ground cracked by the drought in some spots, visitors found partially collapsed roofs, bricks and wooden debris that once made up doors or beams, and even a drinking fountain with water still streaming from a rusty pipe. Crates with empty beer bottles were stacked by what used to be a cafe, and a semi-destroyed old car was rusting away by a stone wall. This is a picture of what life here in the 1990s was like for people who lived there. Authorities blame the situation on the lack of rain in recent months, particularly in January, but also on the aggressive exploitation by the power company which manages the reservoir. As the skeletal ruins continue to capture people's attention, the location has become an unexpected tourist attraction, with holiday makers arriving to see the leftover aspects of the former village. You never really know what you're going to get when you drain bodies of water like these. It's not like draining a bathtub, that's easy. You know what else is easy? Liking and subscribing to this channel.